Well, hello and welcome back. We have a very special type of factoring tonight, and it is called guess and check factoring. Now, this is going to require a little bit of patience because you're going to do a lot of guessing and checking before you get the right answer. So buckle up, and here we go. So last night we practiced factoring trinomials. Remember, we multiply, add, and multiply. So let's review that one last time. I have to multiply to x squared, so that's simply x times x. That starts us off. I have to multiply to 24, so I'll run through my options. And you don't have to write them down every time. I'm sure most of you can do that in your head. Uh, let's see, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. And now I have to find the pair that adds to 11. Well, I'm definitely going with 8 and 3. And if I have to multiply to a positive 24, that tells me the signs are the same. And if I add to 11, that means they're both positive. Now remember, I wouldn't set it equal to 0 unless I saw the word solve. Well, in today's factoring, we're going to do what's called guess and check factoring. So let's take a look at this guess and check factoring. You'll notice that the coefficient, or the number in front of x squared this time, is a 3. So I can try to pull out a GCF. That's my goal. But 3 is not divisible by 19 or 40, so there is no GCF. So this tells me I have to use guess and check factoring. Now I'm not saying this is pretty, and this takes a lot of work. So here's what I do. I still say, man, multiply, add, multiply. This time, I have to multiply to a 3x squared. So I can't just say x times x. What multiplies to 3 is 3 and 1. So I need to say 3x and x. So it was fairly nice because there was only one option. Here's where it gets nasty. I have to multiply to 40, and I have lots of options. I've got 1 and 40, 2 and 20. Let's see, 4 goes in there, 4 and 10. 5 goes in there, 5 times 8 is 40. And I think that's it. I think I've got four different options. Now, you'll notice, do any of these add to 19? That's what I want in the middle. Well, no, they don't, and they're not going to because of this 3. So here's where all the work comes in. What I suggest you do, and I still do it every time, is I make these two little smiley faces, one on the insides and one on the outsides. And I need those to total 19x. So now, it's called guess and check for a reason. I'm just going to guess one of these factors to work. Um, I like 4 and 10, so I'm going to try those two first. So I'm going to guess the 4 goes here, and I'm going to guess the 10 goes here. Now I check my insides, 4x, 4 times x, and I check my outsides, 3x times 10 is 30x. Can those ever add up to 19? Do 4 and 30 ever make 19? Well, no, so I know those are incorrect. What I can do is now switch my order. I can put the 10 here and the 4 here. Check again. So I'm guessing and checking. This is 10x. This is 12x. Can 10 and 12 ever add up to 19? No. So what does that tell me? Those two are not it. So now I have to guess and check two different numbers. If you have a pencil, it's the best time to be using it. I'm going to try, I don't know, 5 and 8. So I don't have a pencil. I'm going to scratch those off. I'm going to put my 8 here and my 5 here and guess and check again. Uh, in the middle, the insides, I get 5x. On the outsides, I get 24x. Can 5 and 24 ever make 19? Oh yeah, I think I have a winner. If I do 24 minus 5, that leaves me with 19. So that tells me I have these in the right order. Now I just have to watch the signs. If I'm multiplying to a negative 40, that tells me the signs are different. And I need to add to a positive 19. So do I want a positive 24 and a negative 5, or a negative 5 and a positive 24? Well, I want the positive 24 and the negative 5. So I finally have got my correct answers. I'm going to rewrite them so it's a little neater. My factors are 3x minus 5 and x plus 8. Okay, so like I said, there's no simple formula for this. You have to guess and then check. We'll try a few more. All right, so my directions are to factor again. Look for that GCF. Do you have a GCF? Well, 2 goes into 18, but not 15, so that tells me guess and check. All right, so my two sets of parentheses. Remember, I have to multiply, add, multiply. 2x squared is fairly nice because my only options are 2x and x. 
Now here comes the work. I got to get 18. So let's list them out. I could use 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 times 6, and what is that? I think that's it. I've got three options to check. I'm going to put that smiley face in, check the outsides, check the insides, and remember, I want a negative 15 in the end. All right, so you just go for it. I'm going to start with, I don't know, 6 and 3. I like those. I'm going to try my 3 here and my 6 here. So this gets me 3x. This gets me 12x. Holy smokes, I got it on my first try. 3 and 12 make 15. Now, let's talk about signs. If I'm multiplying to a positive 18, that tells me the signs have to be the same, either two positives or two negatives. And if I'm adding to a negative 15, that tells me I need both of these to be negative. And that was just a lucky guess and check on my part. So my factors are 2x minus 3 and x minus 6. All right, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you got to try them all. All right, our next example, we're going to factor again. So I'm going to look for that GCF first. I see a 15, a 13, and a 2. And darn it all, nothing they have in common. So I have to guess and check. So I'm going to go multiply, add, multiply. Now, you'll notice this one's the nasty one this time. 15x squared. I could be 1 in 15 or 3 in 5. So I'm going to leave that blank for a moment. The last term that I'm multiplying, my only option is 2 and 1. So to me, that's the friendly one, and I'm going to stick that in right away, 2 and 1. Let's talk about our signs. If I'm multiplying to a positive, that means the signs are the same. And if I'm adding to a positive, that means they're both positive. All right, so let's just go for it. Let's try 1 and 15. I'm going to try my 15x here and my 1x here and see what I get. So I'm going to draw my outsides and my insides, and I need to get 13. So that's 2x, and that's 15x. Can you make a 13 out of that? Yes! So you might be thinking you have a winner, except, hold on, how do you get 13? I would have to do 15x minus 2x to get 13. That means 1 would be positive, and 1 would be negative. And darn it, we said we had to have the same signs if we're multiplying to a positive. So even though it looks like it work, works, that one actually doesn't work. So just to be clear, I just want to make sure we follow that. I know we can get 13, but one would be positive and one would be negative. And I have to multiply to a positive 2, which tells me they have to either both be negative or both be positive. So I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to say, well, one of this is 1x and this is 15x. Inside, I would get 15 times 2 is 30x. Outside, I would get 1x. Can those ever add to 13? My answer is no. So I know 1 and 15 aren't going to do it. All right, let's try 3 and 5. I'm going to try 3x here and 5x here. So outside, I get 3x. Inside, I get 10x. Well, can that make 13x? Sure. 10x and 3x make 13x if they're both positive. And that's what I needed. I need both of them to be the same sign. So I think I have a winner. I'm going to put a plus sign here and a plus sign here. And I'm just going to rewrite that as 3x, whoopsie, 3x plus 2 and 5x plus 1. And if you're ever uncertain if you're right, all you have to do is FOIL that out and see if you got what you started with. So if I FOIL, I get 15x squared plus 3x plus 10x plus 2 gets me 15x squared plus 13x plus 2. And by golly, that's exactly what I started with. All right, we're going to make it even uglier on you. So buckle up and here we go. No GCF out of a 10, 13, and 30. So I've got to multiply, add, and multiply. Now, why is this one uglier? Well, look at all the options I have for this term. I could be 1 in 10 or 2 in 5. So I don't have a dead set one I have to pick. Go to this last term. Whew, I could be 1 in 30, 2 in 15, 3 in 10, or 5 in 6. There are lots of choices here. All right, so this is where you just need a lot of patience, and you just need to slow down and try, you know, as many as you can. 
Um, let's talk about our signs. If I'm multiplying to a negative, that means the signs are different. Okay, my signs have to be different. So, like I said, there's nothing you can do but get your hands dirty and try one. I'm going to start, I have no idea, I'm going to start with the 1x and the 10x. Okay, I'm going to make my smiley faces, and I'm going to see what I can get. Oh boy, I'm going to start with the 5 and 6. So I'm going to go 5 and 6 on this end. So in the middle, I get 50. On the outside, I get 6. Can those two ever add up to 13? No, so scratch them. 6 and 5. So just switch the order. On the inside, I get 60. On the outside, I get 5. Can those ever add up to 13? No, so I'm done with that choice. That did not work at all. So now I'll try the next one. Let's go 3 and 10. Inside, I get 30. Outside, I get 10. Do 30 and 10 add up to 13? Nope, scratch those. I'm going to go 10 and 3. On the inside, I get 100. Outside, I get 3. That doesn't work either, so scratch those, and we'll kill that option. All right, let's try the next one. 2 and 15. I'm going to write below here, and uh, you know, hopefully you're erasing on yours. Inside I get 20, outside I get 15, that doesn't work. Switch the order, 15, and what was my number, 2. Inside I get 150 and 2, that doesn't work. Are you kind of getting the feeling the 1 and 10 aren't working for us? I'm going to scratch 1 and 10, and I'm going to rewrite my problem, and I'm going to use 2 and 5. So like I said, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm a little too messy there, and I don't have an eraser. I'm going to go 2x and 5x. I was kind of getting the feeling those numbers weren't even in the ballpark. And I'm going to try again. So again, outsides and insides. Now, even though I scratched 3 and 10 and 5 and 6, I'm going to go back and try them. Let me try 5 and 6 again now with these numbers. Let's go 5 and 6 here. Inside, I get 25. Outside, I get 12. 25 and 12. Can that make 13? Well, it can. 25 minus 12 is 13. So do I have a winner? Do my signs work? Are the signs different, like we said? One has to be positive, one has to be negative. So I think we've got it. Where did I want that positive? I want positive 25, so I'm going to put my plus sign there, and I want a minus 12 to get me 13. So there are my factors. All right, now notice this one says solve instead of factor. So that leads us to one extra step. And as you can see, it says it's equal to zero. That's how we know we want to solve the equation. We actually go one more step like we talked about yesterday. We have to make sure that we tee it up and actually solve for x. So if I just quickly look at it, do I have a GCF or do I have to do the ugly guess and check? Well, looks like I've got a guess and check. So I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses, and notice I'm going to still say equals zero. Make sure you keep that when you see this word solve. All right, first term, I'm going ma'am, multiply, add, multiply. All right, first term is 3x squared, so my only options are 1 and 3, which I love when I only have one option. Now on the end here, two things to check. I have to multiply to a negative, which means my signs are different. Keep that in mind. And what are my options? I can go 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. All right, so let's guess and check. Let's start with 1 and 4. If I put my 4 here and my 1 here, I'm going to draw in my smiley faces on my outside and inside to guess and check. Inside, that's a 4. Outside, that's a 3. Can 4 and 3 add up to 11? No. So let's reverse the order and try 1 and 4. Inside, that's a 1x. Outside, that's a 12x. Can you get an 11 out of a 1 and a 12? Yes. So it sounds like we have a winner. Let's just make sure our signs work. I would have to do a 12x minus a 1x, meaning I have different signs. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I want this 12x to be positive, and I want this 1x to be negative. Now, because that mine's a little sloppy, I'm going to rewrite it. I have 3x minus 1 times x plus 4 equals 0. If it just said factor, I would be done. But because it says solve, now we tee it up like we did yesterday. So I put the t in between my factors. I only have two factors. And I set each one equal to 0. And I simply solve for x. I'm going to add 1, so 3x equals 1, and divide by 3. 
x equals 1 over 3, or 1 third. On this side, I just get x equals negative 4. So my solutions are 1 third and negative 4. So remember, it doesn't matter um, the order that you write them in here. Just make sure that if it says solve, you go one more step. Okay, well, like I said, it's just a lot of guess and check. So at this point, we want you to factor this one on your own, complete it in your notebook, and we'll be checking your solution in class tomorrow. So just be careful. You've got lots of options for 12 and several options for 15. Take your time and guess and check. Good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow.